I was editing video the other day and I was watching some of the video and I felt like the way it was edited that some of my remarks came across as negative towards show groomers, uh, professional pet groomers, pet people, um, any anybody else that, that grooms their dogs or does any sort of grooming. I really feel like I it sounded like negative, like I was speaking ill of them and that's not what I meant at all. I'm just trying to compare different techniques and different reasons why we groom the way we do. So everybody keep calm and groom on. When they show that dog, they want it to look good that day. They're not looking long term. Where us, we look more long term. You know, we've got this show coming up and then we've got another one after that and another one after that. We tend to be more fussy about how we do things and trying to break, you know, less coat. Um, so, you know, no matter what you see when you go to dog shows and all these beautiful dogs and everything, I've actually walked up to one of these dogs that looked like this and stuck my hands underneath and it was a solid wad. They don't, they don't care. They, they just want that dog finished and shown and, and then they're done with it. So we have a tendency to be a little more fussy about things like that because that's our job. You know, we, we're into hair and that's what we want to do. So um, when we work this coat, what I'm going to start doing is if she does really well today, I'm probably going to keep her all the way till Orlando. So I'm going to start working this coat. And the more I work this coat, I want you guys to kind of take a note of what this top coat looks like. When I start working this coat and you see me in Orlando with her, there won't be any of this. It won't, it won't be sticking up and curly and weird. Um, it'll all be, I'll be working her back coat every week with my carding knives and we'll get rid of all that damaged coat and it'll all be laying down. And she's got a big funny looking cowlick right in the back of her <laughs> neck right here. Did you see it? That, yeah. I'm like, how can I fix that? I might be plucking some of that hair, I'm thinking. Yeah. I'm um, if you were going to talk about it because I was going to ask. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so normally these guys aren't actually, you know, they're not actually, you can pluck their hair, obviously. They're used to you know having it worked you can pluck it so in certain little areas you can do that but their their coat isn't like a terrier it is what we call it hand stripping because we want to differentiate we don't want people you know most of your pet dogs are going to get clippered um, but I do encourage some of my newer clients um, to, to just card this back coat out because um, my clients are usually monthly to begin with but it, it just looks nicer and it stays nice and shiny whereas when you start clippering it especially the buff ones you can see it just kind of fades out and it gets this funky looking ugly color and they get like 20 pounds of undercoat that's why they take forever to dry even if they've only got this much hair because they don't have any more of this coarse stuff it's all this fluffy undercoat stuff and it takes 10 times longer to get clean and 10 times longer to dry um, so I do encourage, you know, my clients uh, a lot of times to, you know, kind of keep that back coat carded if we possibly can. Um, I've got a new Springer that's not from great breeding, um, but I've talked her into, since this is the first one she's had since a puppy, I've talked her into leaving her back coat and she's like, because she's red and white, she's like, oh my God, she's so pretty. Why didn't you tell me this before? I'm like, because it wasn't relevant. You got them from rescue, they'd already been clippered and their coat was already ruined and there wasn't anything I could do about it. I said, but now since you've had this one since a puppy, she was just thrilled because it's so much prettier than that faded out, ugly looking undercoat stuff. Cause you just, it just ruins all of this coarser stuff on top. So that being said, as much as I love American Cocker Spaniels, do you really think this dog is gonna do its job with this much hair? They're flushers. They're supposed to go into a bush and flush birds and things out. I think that would be the only thing coming out. The dog would be stuck in the bush because it would get all, and you'd have to go and get it. So uh, this, is, this is more for aesthetics with this particular breed. Um, English Cockers and American Cockers um, in England, everything's just called the Cocker because they all think they're English Cockers. Um, English Cockers have a longer snout, a longer wider snout, and a flat longer top skull and they only have like that Springer hair. 
they have just the, the furnishings here and here it's not like this. Um, that they came from the same breed. They just split them and found the ones, that, every once in a while, Lindy will get one that'll, what we call, that doesn't grow hair on the front of the legs and stuff. It's to, to throw back to them splitting that breed. So the front of the legs and the front of the feet here, it stays really short. And so you'll, every once in a while, genetically, you know, that'll, that'll still come out. So at any rate, this is all, these guys are really all, all beauty contests. If they're, if they're out in the field doing their job, they're cut down. Um, and, and a lot of them now, they breed, um, not a field spaniel, because that's a, that's a separate breed in itself, but they call them field cockers, where, again, they're the ones that they don't have as much hair, and they breed them on purpose to, to continue to use them for what they were bred for. Um, we don't generally take these guys out and do that with them. They're just, they're the Barbies of the Spaniel community, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay, good girl. So this is the first time I've actually groomed her other than bathing her because, again, she was shown two weeks ago and I wanted to be able to shave her face and uh, show you guys how to do all that stuff. Um, so I bathed her and I, um, I stretch dried her. Um, I don't know if you guys know what that means, but basically that means straight from wet. You use your dryer and you stretch with your brush and straighten this coat. And then it still a lot of times has a little bit of a wave in it. So I came back with the flat iron and um, straightened a lot of this out with the flat iron. So generally what I do when I'm competing is I do all the clipper work first, which is the face, shave the whole face. And then you come into this, we've talked about this shoulder layback before, okay? A lot of times they'll do it, but it looks like probably they did it with a 10 because they're trying to give her just a teeny bit more neck. And then we come over the edge of the eye here and around the back here, you guys can see it's shorter. This, that's all that's clippered in the top of the ears. Everything else is done with scissors or with a carving knife. And everything for her is so funny because, you know, the handlers do things differently than I do. So anytime I do something new, she's kind of like, and then she goes, oh, okay. Because <laughs> she's young and she's been, you know, she's been with handlers and been, you know, shown. And so that's, that's a lot of times, you know, a whole different process. She lays down to be dried underneath, which is really nice. Oh, yeah. Mushy, mushy, mushy. mushy. Yeah. You want these, the, the breed standard calls for this to be as wide as the back of their head. So if you had one that had like a really snipey kind of a thin muzzle, you could leave a little more hair and make it look a little bit wider. Yeah. Yep. I like it a little, I'm liking it a little bit softer on her because I think she does need a little bit more mush. Huh? She didn't need the bit of extra. I would probably go against the grain with the 10. Just take it all off. And I'm sorry, I forgot to mention, if I don't answer you, please speak up. I have an ear infection and a sinus infection that I'm treating and this ear is still like, feels like I'm underwater. So I'm not hearing quite as well. Like I'm getting too much like back noise and stuff. So if I don't hear you, just feel free to speak up or say my name. And I like to stretch this lip out and get all along those lip flues because the mush makes 
fungus and stuff grow all up in there if you don't keep that clean. And additionally, when I have one of these dogs, I also carry um, little baby wipes or puppy wipes or you know whatever you want to do. Because every morning I wipe their eyes and I wipe along their lip line so they don't get any kind of infections or anything going on. And their ears have to be cleaned very frequently too. I'm sure you guys have customers that don't do that and they all end up with chronic ear issues and yeast and all kinds of stuff. She's a very nicely marked black and tan. This is what we call phantom and poodles. But um, the thing with uh, cockers is the black ones and the black and tans are all shown as black. And they also have, that they're, I think, aren't they the only one like in the AKC that has like three different varieties or something just based on color? Yeah. So they're black cocker and then there's party and then there's Ascob, any, any other solid color than black. And I'm like, why don't you just show them all the, I don't get it, but that's how they do it. So the black and tans and the blacks are all shown together. And I tend to like their temperament. Um, I like their temperament more than the, um, than the creams or the silvers or um, especially the reds. I just, I tend to like these black and black and tans much better.